What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be talking about form validation in Angular for template-driven forms. So, why do we need, like, it kind of, see, I remember when I first started programming, I always wondered why we need validation so badly because you're probably so like most normal people will fill out forms and will fill you know fill out forms to the best of their ability like i go to the doctor's office and you know they ask me to fill out a form like i'm going to fill it out like the way it's supposed to be filled filled out but uh people normal people people in the general public don't seem to abide by this code that me and you have where we fill out forms correctly because People will literally go to any, like, they'll lie on forms, they'll put bogus information on forms. I'm starting to get maybe like a little bit angry about it, but it is kind of annoying. And that's why we have form validations so that we can prevent people like uh, um, like guardrails. They're the guardrails to make sure, you know, people are staying, you know, in the lines or people are staying on the road so that people you know we can get good data into our database because you don't have good data in your database that's a, that's a, but this is another topic for another day but let's just go ahead and jump into it so where do you think trick question where do you think the validation is happening in this html element this is all angular this is valid um where do you think the form validation is starting True. It's kind of a trick question. I don't really expect you to know it, but it's happening right here. What is happening is we are assigning what's called a template reference variable. And if you don't know what a template reference variable is off the top of your head, you want to go back and watch my video on temp template reference variables. But you can always tell that it's a template reference variable by, um, let me see, the pound sign. The, the pound sign is how you can always tell something is a template reference variable, but it's also got a very unique, um, whenever you see a template reference variable and you see ng model being passed into this part right here, that is probably form, that's a form of form validation for more specifically template driven forms. It's not, um, you don't see this in usually don't see this in anything else but form validation you do see template reference variables but not with the ng model so whenever you see that just remember that's probably um, form validation so next cr trick question i'm getting like really crazy with all my trick questions and i've actually actually let's just i've exposed it i exposed myself so i'm just gonna go ahead and bring it down and quit with the game so what happens whenever you actually pull out this value from the template reference variable, what's happening is you're pretty much reaching into this input and pulling out a bunch of JavaScript so that you can have this value. Notice th this part right here, these two values. So if a form is not valid, what you want to pop up is you want it to say invalid right here. So if this if statement is if this uh, Pokemon name, if you notice these two things right here, is not pristine. So if it is pretty much dirty, dirty is the opposite of pristine. We'll talk about that here in a second. It's going to show up as this invalid. And it's not, obviously, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're a web developer. So you know that it's going to show up like this and not in an actual div. So that's pretty much the whole entire idea behind form validation for template driven forms. But there's some other things that you are going to need to know beforehand before you actually start coding anything. And look, okay, so let's just go back once again. And I'm just going to erase a bunch of this. This is a template reference variable. And I'm sorry I'm, if I'm being very repetitive, but it's kind of like the whole entire idea of this and why this exactly exists. This is basically turning this into a variable that was from which you can manipulate. Then you can use it to check the validity of the form. So underneath the hood, whenever you instantiate this uh, ng model, what's going on underneath the hood is it's keeping track of all this for you. 
it's a lot of magic magic <laughs> it's a lot of magic going on and it's got three different properties on here so if you look here we've got our pokemon name again i've already talked about that enough but if you notice down here what's going on is these are different forms of validation different almost like levels or different types it's like different types of pokemon this is like a squirtle this is a pikachu this is a bulbasaur but valid is going to be you said this and i'll just kind of give you like a, an example so it's just going to check if it's valid based on certain conditions that you make so um validation you make you make okay so what is pristine pristine is kind of a cool word pristine is going to mean that you haven't even or you haven't even modified the actual input element or any of the validate or you haven't triggered any of the validation for if it's been edited or not and or modified edited whatever you want to call it but basically this is going to mean you have not edited it you have not edited or modified whatever you want to call it modified updated um many different things okay so what is touched basically touched means have you like gone over it have you touched it i don't know the exact i'm sure it's some type of javascript event but i'm not i just know that if you touch it if you literally just pull your mouse over it or you click on it it's going to trigger this so if it's been touched it's kind of the way just the way it sounds so uh touch is going to be the field once again has been touched okay so these things are very simple to understand now the only thing that you need to understand is there's opposites of these and i'm just going to get rid of all of this you just need to realize that just remember these three because there's other ones but you never see them i'm just going to be honest with you like you hardly ever see them and then you have to remember the opposites for these so there's invalid so there's valid and then there's invalid and there's pristine and then there is dirty <laughs> So the opposite of pristine is going to be dirty. And these are actual properties that are going to be on this template reference variable. And valid, valid, you you have to understand that. Touched, and then the op what do you think the uh, opposite of touched is? It's going to be untouched. Pristine is the only one that is kind of you have to think about a little bit. Pristine and dirty, but then again, it does make sense as well too. So that is pretty much the whole entire theory now let's go ahead and start working on um, coding this thing so first thing what we want to do is let's go ahead and create our template reference variable and the way that i'm going to do that is let's not even make another input element let's just modify this one up here and I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and create the template reference variable. So I'm going to go Pokemon name is equal to, and once again, ng model. Whenever you see this, and whenever you see ng model within the quotes, just think form validation. That's all you got to think. So then we have our ng model. That's already taken care of. We don't have to worry about any of that now let's go ahead and well we've already got an ng model change so we don't need to worry about any type of events we can actually just go down here and if the we can add our error to the form so if i go down here this will be like our little dashboard for our form and we will do the same as we did right here so we kind of based our actual validation off of this this is where the actual words are popping up and this is where the actual validation is going to happen 
this is where you're instantiate this is where you're basically building the infrastructure for the validation you're not actually triggering anything that's going to tell the user something is invalid just a key point there so we're going to go div then we'll go ng if then we're going to go in here pokemon name it's going to be just for good luck charm i'm going to tell you one more time that is the template reference variables third time's a charm okay so and let's go ahead i like the word pristine so let's just go ahead and test pristine on there but you could test any of them remember there's valid you can do invalid there's pristine there's dirty and then there's touched and then there's untouched so we're gonna go pristine and for some reason the validation on this is screwed up or the type checking is screwed up so I'm gonna go in here and yeah I'm gonna add a trailing and I'm going to say this is not pristine anymore it is dirty <laughs> okay and let's go ahead in here to and hmm i think that this is this is fine if you want to add more validation the only thing that you would have to do is just go in here and change this to dirty if you want it or touched if you want to do touched untouched or any of the other ones feel free to but i'm just going to do pristine and I'm going to make sure that it is compiling. So we are compiling and let's go in here and see. Okay, so we've got our error and it's loaded. So we don't have any actual, uh, so our form is still pristine. We have not touched our form. It is, like I said, it is definitely pristine and now we also have our template reference variable hooked up to our first is cool radio. So let's go ahead and touch it and see if it actually makes it dirty. So I'm going to go in here. Pokemon is cool and not pristine anymore. It is dirty. We have successfully done validation and we have learned the intricacies of how to make people not submit forms when they are not supposed to. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.